back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that hello, hello. break, talk about some of the fun things, the interesting things <laughs> that we found going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Ben Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and Pedro Mateus, mm-hmm. and everyone watching hello. us live on Twitch. Hello. Mm-hmm. Got a lot of stuff to talk about, including Zombie Sco, but hey, man, <laughs> it's, got it's got to be said. <laughs> we need to address it, but I want to start mm-hmm. on by saying, um, Hopefully there will not be any audio fires this week, but I am trying something just a little bit different, a little spicy. And I've, I've turned a Raspberry Pi 4 into a Jack Trip hub server that Pedro is currently running on right now. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so if uh, somewhere during the video version of this, Pedro has to communicate with interpretive dance, that is why. Okay. <laughs> I was going to make a very, very inappropriate no, joke, but I stopped myself. <laughs> save yourself, save, save that nonsense until Saturday. But hopefully that's going to run smooth. Also, I've been learning Reaper. Mm-hmm. I love Adore. Adore's not, yeah, I mm. mean, it, it's great, but I want to keep my options open, especially after some of the nonsense I had to do to get uh, Jack Trip tied in with NetJack 1 and 2 Adore to make everything nice and copacetic. How about you, Jill? You've been up to? Yeah, so uh, it's my Steve husband's birthday today. Yay! <laughs> so I'm very excited about that. But he has to work late tonight, so we're going to celebrate on Friday. And that'll be good. And uh, I've done had more cro- progress on working on my room and getting it remodeled. So things are starting to move out. <laughs> All right, eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Pedro, what's up with those headsets, man? You trying to be like me? Uh, <laughs> sort of, kind of. I, I actually was just looking for a new pair because the Corsair HS50s that I had were, well, they were falling apart and I put some Gorilla Glue to hold them together and, you know, with the heat of one's body, the glue started to seep out and my hair would get glued to the uh, the top <laughs> band. So, yeah, no, the, they Pedro. had to go. <laughs> uh, and I... I asked you, it's like, are the um, AKG K240 Mark IIs any good? And you're like, uh, do you have a link there? <laughs> yeah, this no, is, those this, are good. This is almost <laughs> accurate, I believe I said, for how much? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, for th- uh, 30 pounds. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, very good price for uh, considering, like, the band itself looks pristine. There was some signs of use uh, in the uh, fake um, fake leathery bits. But, yeah, no, I replaced those with the uh, velour ones that are currently on my ears. And these were completely unused, so I- I'm not complaining. Well, on behalf <laughs> of everyone watching, Pedro, you look adorable. Aww. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Unlike this nightmare, starting right off from the register. Yes. IBM Red Hat Face Copyright Antitrust Lawsuit from SCO Group. SCO Group Successors Xenos. Um, Big Blue and its third capped subsidiary accused of nicking unit swear blueprints and like, oh man, this again, right? (laughs) This again. Yeah, this again. So basically. I went, I, I looked this over. The suit alleges stolen intellectual property in the IBM AIX and collusion with Red Hat. Like, they're, they're serious mm-hmm. about this, or they're trying mm-hmm. to be serious about this. IBM and Red Hat got together to take us out or something to that effect. They're using the IBM acquisition of Red Hat yeah. to justify this yeah. for some reason. <laughs> you got to think about that. I mean, SCO versus IBM was still ongoing in 2011 when Zenos, then you... Unzis, U-N-X-I-S, man, these people like their names. They bought Sco's IP. And they're like, eh, don't worry about it. We're not going to do anything nefarious with it, right? <laughs> so, okay, they claim that IBM is out to destroy, not Linux, but free BSD. That's <laughs> what the- this, this reads like bad yeah. fanfic. I understand that. No. <laughs> It does boil down to this. It, it, it's like IBM and Red Hat merger made a company that no one can compete with. And also they, they nicked their stuff way back when. Mm-hmm. And we make a product that you genuinely have to look from like, what? Oh, <laughs> I guess. Okay, that's the thing. It's, it's, it's the antitrust thing, which to 
which I'll say it very, very um, suspiciously just like leaves out, oh, I don't know, Susie Enterprise Linux, because that's not a thing. Hmm? <laughs> or the Ubuntu server offering. No, no, no. Oh, no. no, yeah. <laughs> you know, the other companies in the space that are doing just fine. <laughs> I don't know. That's what they're going to have to put the suit down to because the whole IBM stealing code, you, we've already so, sorted that with Unix where an open server, server. That's just going to be tossed out. They're not going to mess with it. So the only thing they're going to try to get through is like, oh, we, we can't let this merger that's already happened and happen, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. At this point, I read this. As, okay, what exactly do you stand to gain with this yeah. i get it you know <laughs> bad publicity is still publicity and i'm sure you are desperate for some but sco died on that hill do you really <laughs> want to go stand there really hey, Pedro, i want to ask you this there has to be somewhere like sco purist no man oh <laughs> just sco fan people that they're uh, yes, the this scum. Uh, scum. I mean, what? Go <laughs> <laughs> you win. I, I, I honestly don't think that anyone likes Sco. Anyone who's even had a cursory glance at what they've done, and especially Linux users, what they've done around Linux, it's like, um, no? <laughs> Did, mm. No. no. <laughs> Jill, how many years have we been reading about oh, this? Oh, Lord. So after 17 years, <laughs> this old badger is trying to haunt our penguins once again. <laughs> so in, in actually in 2016, uh, Xenos CEO Sean Snyder said, we are not SCO. We are investors who bought the products. We do not buy the ability to pursue litigation against IBM, and we have absolutely no interest in that. So, yes, as Pedro was saying, what has changed? Well, I think they, they have fallen on hard times and are scraping to stay alive. And really, this lawsuit has no merit, like, like in the past. <laughs> so. I don't get it. The only reason I wanted to give this a mention simply was just the absurdity of it, A, because this, yeah. this, this is a nothing, a nothing burger bun. Saying that IBM and Red Hat have colluded to like yeah, <laughs> big <laughs> big Linux is attacking BSDs. I don't even know where to go with that. It, yeah, it's more amusing. <laughs> Fortunately, I, I genuinely wish time and resources were not being spent with this. But get some popcorn. I mean, this would be fun to watch for a few minutes. So we'll we'll get an update on that, and it's probably going to end exactly like everyone at home's like, yeah, we know this is going to end. I'm like, yeah, but. Come on, popcorn. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> OBS Studios got a new release candidate out. And if you follow me on Twitter, it's like, wait a minute, you fixed VST2 paths in Linux? Because, well, that's something that should have been fixed a long time ago. And sure enough, they did. <laughs> kinda. Kinda. Because, um, you know, the only suite of uh, open source VST plugins that I know of, LSP, uh, failed to load the GUI. Couldn't get that to work, but there's a gang of other fixes. Mm. Uh, I did notice with juice-based VST plugins, couldn't resize the GUIs on that. Two of my commercial plugins, and we're talking about audio plugins, by the way, for those at home, they worked from ACM and Overtone. Undo, redo. This is a big thing they've been working on with OBS. If you're unfamiliar with OBS, it's what we're using to stream the show right now. And it's been available for Linux for quite some time. Solid piece of um, kit, just in general. For, you know, somebody new, you know, like, hey, I want to do a stream. I want to get the stuff. You know, I want to do things like, hey, there's three of us and it works and it's brilliant. But the undo redo will allow you to, because there's been, how many times has this hit you, Pedro? You accidentally delete like a scene and I mm -hmm. especially, mm -hmm. or just like a source and it's grouped and you're like, oh no. Yeah. Like everything in that group is just gone. <laughs> <laughs> and control Z, control Z. Oh, it doesn't work. Nope. Why not? No. <laughs> So that's in this release candidate. Work on that. And they've added the support. I think I was talking about it last week, week four. Wayland support. Pipe wire stuff is in there. And there's a lot of new stuff to go play around with. I highly suggest checking it out. It's easy enough to build. There's even like search, compile, OBS, Linux, 
they have a nice wiki copy pasta for pretty much any distribution you could think of. And uh, one day I'll get Pager to do it. I used to do it on uh, <laughs> Corora <laughs> when I was using that uh, because, yeah, the it wasn't on the Fedora repos at the time. And it's like, okay, I need it, so I'm going to do it. Mm. And um, I think um, I may be slightly wrong, but I think it was uh, Dick Thomas uh, who had the uh, a tutorial on how to build it Fedora 23 or 22 at the time. Mm-hmm. He had the tutorial on how to build it on his website. It's like, thank you. <laughs> it, that helped a great deal. <laughs> it, in the early days, it, it, it was to the point where I think a certain script was made um, mm-hmm. to assist people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I take that back. Hi, I take that back. Strider, <laughs> Strider put the Python juice in it. I just was like, all right, this is like, get this thing to build. Yay. But... <laughs> Go play with it. Go check it out. It is nice. I should point out if you're on, um, when I mentioned Pedro, you're not going to be able to compile it on um, something based on 2004 because the pipe wire is too old. Yeah, that could be an issue. <laughs> but I do believe they're going to put a flag in there to be like, hey, I'm not using pipe wire, so let me build. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There. <laughs> That'd be a good thing. Happy to see that. But since we're talking about stuff Pedro does, you run the KDE. Hey, <laughs> yes. I do. Uh, I do run uh, KDE Neon specifically. It is the OS that's currently powering this box. And, um, well, a uh, while ago, the KDE Neon developers, uh, they were starting to get uh, work done on the offline updates. What they call offline updates, which are just you download everything, and then the next time you reboot, it installs the updates. Similar in... <laughs> at least in name to what Windows does. At least that seems to be the general perception that's going on there. Uh, but it, it's actually not that different to how, say, Chrome OS does it. It's not the same because Chrome OS does uh, atomic updates, which were all the rage a while back. This isn't that. Uh, it doesn't completely update uh, an entire image of the system Hi, and load Hi. that. I, yes. I, 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 I'm the internet. Uh, okay. Th- Katie's Windows 10 now. <laughs> Again. No. <laughs> only in the sense that you need to reboot ever, uh, after every update. Because other than that, everything else is completely different. The, w- the reason that you have to reboot uh, in Windows 10 after every update is because the operating system <laughs> actively breaks itself in order to be able to update. It, it, it's just how it works and you have to reboot otherwise it's just not going to work properly um this is exactly to combat that situation and kde has always had a bit of an issue uh with updates breaking ui functionality kde in it being the most uh, prolific one at that to the point where you couldn't even uh, click the reboot button because KDE in it would just seg fault because there was a version mismatch. So, yeah, uh, this actively fixes all of those issues. And if you've ever tried, even if you're, you're, even if you're not using KDE, let's say you're just on Ubuntu and you're using the graphics drivers PPA like you're supposed to and you have the NVIDIA drivers and you got an update to the NVIDIA drivers and then you go to launch a game, psych fault. You go to open up a browser, psych fault. I think everyone here has experienced that. This <laughs> fixes that too because the old version is still there. It's not getting updated until you reboot. This is good. Okay, it's annoying. It's going to force you to update a lot more, but it's good. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, can, can I cut it off? Uh, if you can. I uh, knew it. It's Windows 10. <laughs> I don't know, no, just, honestly, because I like it. <laughs> so like I it. left yeah. it. <laughs> I'm I'm so used to manually doing my own updates, so I would like that option. But I'm sure it's there somewhere. <laughs> but I think it's <laughs> I think it's really cool that you can actually uh, do the updates in the terminal as well with the the pink on uh, command, and you don't have to use discover, which is nice. That's that's the way I do it. <laughs> I actually got the uh, notification uh, yesterday as I was. Um, 
<laughs> as I was typing the show notes, uh, it's like, oh, let's do that. It's like, pardon the Portuguese, but d- yeah, there you go. There you, you go. have <laughs> to reboot in order to install the updates. That's uh, <laughs> that's kind of what that says. And yeah, it that's literally all that is. Mm. And you don't have to reboot it right then and there like you do have to do in Windows 10 if you want, you know, <laughs> yeah. things to keep working. Uh, but yeah, it's just when you next reboot, the updates will be done. Okay. And they'll be done safely without breaking anything else. So that, 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 as far as I'm concerned, that's good. That's an improvement as far as KDE is concerned. <laughs> that, that's interesting. I don't know if, uh, I, I think for me, and I think maybe for a lot of people we're looking at, it's like, I, I don't want my um, desktop manager to have anything to do with my system updates. Ever. Period. I, I need that to be a butter robot, but also you can I'm, use app full upgrades still to do the updates as soon as they come in. So <laughs> I'm from the school of thinking of um, auto updates terrify me. Like yes. would, <laughs> no, 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 no. But but for your desktop usage, maybe I'm just not wound up to that way of thinking. But yeah, this uh, uh, actively removes all of the concerns that you have from automatic updates because, yes, they will break stuff. It's kind of inevitable. If you're patching a live system, stuff's going to break. That's just what's going to happen. But this works around that by forcing you to reboot for the updates to be applied. What about my uptime, mm-hmm. bro? <laughs> oh, sorry, Jordan. I didn't recognize you there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Up, uptime something you will grow out of trust me um, jill this is something we were playing around with in our discord earlier this week yeah this is so cool this is actually um if you like using neofetch to show off your system specs with a, a pretty screen capture that you can show everyone your specs then you will love cpu fetch too yes it's like the terminal neofetch But instead of showing you your system info and distro logo, it shows you your CPU architecture and the CPU brand logo, um, like your Intel machine, your AMD machine, or your ARM. And uh, right now it only supports x86, uh, 64-bit, but I'm hoping in the future they'll have a 32-bit one also, (laughs) so I can show off (laughs) my old uh, 486s and whatnot. (laughs) I think those are still Intel processors, so who's... I don't know if we're looking at it. Let's see. X86-64 and ARM. Um, Android, Mac OS, Windows, and... Uh, yeah, Android. It was Android. kind of interesting yeah. because I saw the... Who who originally... Was it Linux Nero that posted that? Uh, it was either Linux Nero or Theron. I, it was yeah, what are one of two? them. And, They'll uh, tell us in chat. <laughs> yes. I saw that pop in. I'm like, oh, that... It's pointless, but that's neat because I like, you know, the nice little logo. And then I'm like, all right, um, what's it show? I wasn't here at the time. So, you know, I put it up on uh, Threadbooter mm-hmm. and I'm like, hey, look how incredibly slow that is compared to a modern AMD system. <laughs> um, but I think, Pedro, you threw up one, then you went to the Pine Book, right? <laughs> yeah, I did because I saw everyone was posting, oh, AMD, AMD, AMD. Okay, hold on. Pine Book, grab that arm. Cool. That's exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> I saw that and I immediately remember I'm like, I bought a Raspberry Pi 4, right? <laughs> nah, yeah. And I went looking and I'm like, yeah, hang on. Didn't I? Okay, my SSH did that and I pulled it. I'm like, hey, it's the Pi 4. This also led to the Jack Trip being on the Pi too on that same day. I was like, huh, I wonder. <laughs> it's yeah, kind of neat. It's really cool. So unfortunately, Arthur, no, it won't be compatible with the Cirex 386 because it only supports 64-bit, not 32. So that's what I want. I want it to support my Cirex chips and my and my geode chip <laughs> and all the things and all my vintage computers. But it does support all the modern architectures, just about. <laughs> that's cool. I like it. I, I like little things like that. Just, you know, even like NeoFetch. <laughs> Yeah, we love that. Yeah. Well, here's the thing with like Neofetch is I never remember the name of it because that's... It, yeah, it, it's an it, odd name. I, it, I have the same problem, Vin. It's also anti-me because I'm not a very shouty, flashy person. I don't want people. I'm like, hey, look what I got. I'm like, go away. But 
every time somebody wants to pull that up, I'm like, what? I'm typing into Google. Thing, the GUI mm-hmm. thing, terminal <laughs> that shows. <laughs> like going through two or three uh, It's, it's very good for displaying like the screen resolution that you're running on, themes, uh, if you're a particularly fleshy person that likes I to share that uh, your themes. Days. Yes, yeah. that was the uh, springs here. <laughs> you probably can probably even better that. that. I'm just going to send you your audio track. You can fix it. Aww. But yeah, so- the... Um, it, it shows all of that. And uh, before mm-hmm. NeoFetch, it was screen fetch. That's yeah, the one I used to fetch. use the most. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was a, a lot. It had a lot less uh, stats, too. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was it was still cool. And uh, yeah, so so then how I remember it is I just remember uh, Neo from the Matrix. And that's how I remember it. You know, sh- showing off a cool system. <laughs> use Neo. <laughs> NeoFetch. All right. Right on. Right on. <laughs> now, something we'd like to take a look at is um, when somebody writes a blog post, medium post, something like that, about their Linux adventure. Adventures oh, in Linux land. <laughs> hey, I'm going to give Linux a try. So much so. Yeah. Oh, and more importantly, I'm going to tell the world about it. Mm-hmm. Turns out Carlos did just that. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, <laughs> like many, many others before him, he wasn't entirely pleased with the Linux experience, which I guess it's, you know, to be expected. He is a Mac user and he got fed up with the Apple way of doing things. I can definitely see that. Uh, and uh, he got himself a Dell XPS 13. Very good choice. Uh, as decided you know what let's let's give this linux thing a go and i had to force myself personally to continue <laughs> reading after the this line that he wrote <clears throat> oh you power i am an through. extreme yeah. power okay. user yep. to right. the point that many of the keys on my keyboard don't do what the keycap says Ooh. <laughs> okay wizard burn him <laughs> yeah. so that is exactly the kind of pretentious condescension that will make that anyone that can actually from Pedro, fix <laughs> yes <laughs> that, that's me level <laughs> stupid right there um it, that is the kind of thing that you say to immediately alienate anyone who could fix the issues that you ran into. How can you tell? It sounds like a regular Mac user. (laughs) Fair. (laughs) But yeah, his uh, complaint uh, basically boils down to, I had to learn a bunch of uh, CLI stuff when on Mac, I had all of that functionality in a GUI. And the more I read, the more I think he'd be better off with Windows because it's like, oh, I need a GUI to do this and I need a GUI to do that. And I need to be able to do this with minimal mouse clicks and minimal typing. And OK, fair. KD actually comes very close to doing a lot of the stuff that he's asking about. But KDE has a lot of issues like no, a, a lot, lot of issues. issues. Now, he does make mention <laughs> of some Linux <laughs> Hidden gems, you know, he's talking yeah. about Tracker, Firefox, yeah, Nautilus, Firefox. Gnome Shell Extension <laughs> Gallery, NSYNC, GIMP, Inkscape, AppGit, hey, look, the way, Crossover, <laughs> and Zernal, Obscura, uh, something about PDFs, I don't know. It's I, a PDF editor and highlighter. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Here's something that tripped me up, because Pedro, you mentioned, like, I read up to a point, and I'm like, I had a couple of those, but I, I, I powered through <laughs> for the show. There's a couple in there. I'm like, just get out of yeah. here. But one of the ones I, I, I want to get this right is that I feel like I need to clarify that this is an article aimed at Mac users who are considering a migration to Linux in hopes of a more polished system. Morons? I mean, yeah. I don't say that negatively, but I don't think there's a Mac user on earth 137 that was like yes let's head over to linux for that nice smooth transition oh yeah ease of use. linux is a finished product compared to mac os i, <laughs> I, I oh, just boy. saying on that one man now the other one the other one that would have caused me to know about if it wasn't for this show was and i i quote mac os uh-huh. does some dns magic or something and the network feels much faster uh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> he went to Stack Overflow to learn how to disable he IPv6. <laughs> well, he, couldn't yeah. out. he had to go to Stack Overflow to figure out something about DNS. Fail. Also, Macs are full of magic. Um, you, you somehow, and this is the, he ended up on Stack Overflow trying to fix something that you're using GNOME for, which mm-hmm. 
It's a the big network box. GUI, the thing that doesn't look like yeah, a network plug. Network manager. It, it, you like really get up close to it and you're like, oh, that's what that's supposed to be. All right. It was like a little snake or something. It, Gnome Network Manager is a, it's right mm-hmm. there under IPv4. It's a tick it's, box. The option yeah. to disable IPv6 is a tick box. Yeah. <laughs> Pedro, it didn't have a blinky arrow. Uh, clearly <laughs> it's no it's that uh dns magic that mac does i don't know yeah man. hey you know what carlos at least you tried and that's the important thing man maybe maybe next go around but I, I don't really think part of the discussion is that's why something you know i i'm not adverse to it but i always try to be very honest about every time someone it's like hey we're gonna make this super polished um set up and it's going to have all the rough edges bolted. and like you, you can't do that just with the design of how Linux is because especially when you tell somebody you, know, you never have to open a terminal this is all integrated and all that when it's not what happens when something breaks then that person has no knowledge of the underlying system which on Linux you kind of need that or you're going to be the nuke and pave crowd like yeah. oh, the window <laughs> button moved I gotta, gotta format this and get it restart I need to yeah. change my background yes. wallpaper. Oops. Yes. New distro. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> New <boy>. distro. <laughs> you know, Linux is meant for those who love to tinker. The user creates the polish to their needs with customization. That's how we create polish. <laughs> <laughs> and we like building our own framework of productivity. And it doesn't need to have a have gooey polish to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All of a sudden, I have this uh, crazy uh, idea of moving to Poland and uh, settling down <laughs> to create some Polish. You say yeah. that every week. Okay. All the links is going to be in the show notes. So if you want to go back and read this, don't worry about it. Uh, Jill has put a thing. I had to drag it. I'm like, okay, we talked about last week. Um, yes. Google so News is- that was pared down for a 68K. Yeah. There's there's yes. more to it then. Yes, there is. So, yeah, like Ven was saying uh, last week, Sean from Action Retro created the 68k.news HTML text site for Google News for vintage computers we talked about last week. Well, he, he now has a new cool thing. And this is frogfind.com, which is an HTML text-based search engine enhanced for low-powered vintage computers created by Sean at Action Retro on YouTube. And and by the way, Sean, I love your YouTube uh, channel. I've been subscribed for a very long time to it. And I love how you play with all those vintage computers. And so what's really cool about this is it's actually powered by Duck, the DuckDuckGo search engine. And oh, wow, my Mastodon made it in there. Yeah, it's a <laughs> DuckDuckGo wrapper. And... Uh, uh, it's it's cool because he's actually tested it on his um, Mac SE um, that we talked about last week in uh, Netscape 1.1 and 2.0.2, as well as a few 68K Mac versions of the iCab web browser, which I've used many times before. And or, of course, you can this will work with any older text or GUI browser, a la links or links to in the in the terminal and you know i just i just thought this was so cool and and thank you sean from those of us who collect vintage and old computers like my spark station 5 pizza box computer to my left uh i i used frog find on that in links and elinks and a and a very old version of netscape <laughs> 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 and it went very well. <laughs> so it really Admittedly. it really helps us that with you know those old slower computers that don't have much memory and have a hard time connecting to the internet. <laughs> or have a one gigahertz dual core CPU. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. It, it, it is yeah. actually my uh, homepage on the uh, the netbook right here. Okay. Yeah. It's perfect for netbooks. <laughs> Eventually, you have to drop something, or I'm going to stop letting you hold stuff in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't happened yeah. yet. I know you yeah. do, man. Pedro, I couldn't pick up my spark station. That's why I have it behind me. <laughs> oh. Well, maybe, maybe I'll try it out on my vintage um, AMD Ryzen. I got one of those first gens. Mm-hmm. 
Absolutely yeah. tried out. <laughs> that 1700, man. That 1700, baby. I mean, that's old school. That's, that's how one used to have to live, Pedro, back in the day. Yeah, I say that, but uh, Nori is uh, furiously playing Skyrim over there on the uh, 1600. I really wish so. you could just crank the camera over because I've never seen someone <laughs> furiously play Skyrim. <laughs> There's a shelf uh, doing the uh, <laughs> dividing on the way there. So what, does even that, if I turned the camera, I couldn't see it. <laughs> does the camera not have a cord just tossed over? <laughs> <laughs> It'll come back, guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> hey uh if you like the show you like what we do consider heading over to patreon.com that's how we finance everything patreon.com forward slash loading scheme cast we get a bunch of cool bonuses for you if that's your thing if not share the show whatever that's awesome i like seeing retweets and stuff like that on the facebooks mm-hmm. and on mastodon as well we even have an odyssey channel we have a youtube channel we got the twitch channel by the way if you're watching life like what huh like yeah that's what you're watching it's not witchcraft today but we want to thank each and every one of you for making this show possible we don't do commercials we don't have tracking ads and stuff like that on linuxteamcast.com where we got the guides and stuff like that it's just there go play with it hopefully you find it informative maybe even entertaining Mm -hmm. but we have (laughs) some people to thank this week joe yeah, so Omegas, oh my gosh, he's a new advisor at the highest level <laughs> as a Patreon. Thank you so much, Omegas. And we also have AJD, who's a new patron, and someone sent then a goodie. Yeah, a terribly <laughs> mysterious stranger has struck again. And no joke, a lot of stuff in like, this studio is uh like repurposed my stuff i'm just like well um like and one of those things was the show note monitor i have over here and it was a very curious monitor that i had to take a picture of one night on one exam cast weekly and post in discord to like get the absurdity out of it because it was like it was from the early days like this thing had cfl Mm -hmm. tubes in the back it was before i mean it was flat panel but it wasn't led how absurdly long Versus high this monitor was, and um, you know this is basically a 1080p ultra wide before ultra wides existed, but it made a really good show note monitor. But it was old; it was showing its age, and it was incredibly hot. This mm-hmm. is a LG 25 inch ultra wide, and it's nice and long. And Pedro was telling me the kids with their new monitors, they just have like outboard plugs now. Yes, power brick. The, the, the uh, power brick is. Mm-hmm. So you can have the thin, the thin monitor. <laughs> it is very thin. Um, it, I've had it for, I picked it up this morning and uh, it, it, it works as two HDMI. They're like 125 bucks. I can't say run out and buy them. I don't know. No, that, I don't understand why you would want one if it wasn't in portrait mode. <laughs> If you really want something that's bigger than 1920 by 1080 and you don't have a whole lot of money. It's like 2550 by 1080. Yeah, it's it's, the 21.9 1080 resolution, yeah. yeah. (laughs) I guess, but I like it. Thank you very much. Easy to control. It's got that one knob on the bottom, which gets very confusing when it's on the side, so I gave up. I'm like, that's good enough. (laughs) (laughs) And I think we have the same mysterious benefactor uh, who also sent me. The microphone, yeah. uh, the Rode, um, awesome Procaster. Procaster. I, I, I keep wanting to call it Procaster, but no, it's Procaster. Yeah. So, thank I you very much. I've mysterious always person. called it the uh, Rode Podcaster because my brain was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a decent that mic, that would be fitting. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very decent mic. Also, yes. I'm enjoying watching that, um, Spider Mount, not Droopy Mount. <laughs> I'll replace the elastic bands at some point. Okay. All right. <laughs> Fine. Let's get into uh two quick little bits of pie that we have for mm. our sweet pies. And that is mm, yum. Uh, pumpkin, pumpkin pie. pie. Maybe. Yes. I don't know. Definitely. Do, yeah. do they make is it easy enough to add like food coloring? Because I'd want to make something that looked like that, but it was Oh edible. yeah, you can make them. Orange or yellow. I've seen people do that. Mm-hmm. All right. It's literally any color you'd like. <laughs> That's Steve's husband's pie for his birthday. The, he loves pumpkin pie. The warning behind <laughs> that is be wary of Venn pie. 
<laughs> it sparkles. No. Uh, the <laughs> if you have a bunch of old uh, USB flash drives and you'd like the ability to copy them to say new ones um maybe you've been looking for a dedicated device that you can just plug two drives in and maybe an sd card and just there done wait a minute can Um, i change this to where it says feed me you could. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the uh, author is actually working on improving the GUI a little bit. Uh, the There was an old version of uh, this device that made use of, uh, I think, what was it? Uh, R-Sync. And mm-hmm. it just had a very basic functionality to the GUI. But now, um, Sean J., I'm assuming that's uh, the name we're going with, uh, has decided, you know what, let's make this work with DD, so you can actually DD one drive to the other. And um, the one thing that uh, they weren't able to do was to have a progress bar <laughs> because yeah. it's dd <laughs> so yeah Pager, uh, what you don't you don't like that like coming back and like this shouldn't be taken so <laughs> yeah no, it's like status progress <laughs> yeah. so i could see this like okay it's still copying things over all right yeah but yeah no to actually have a progress bar it needs a little bit of a uh, work uh and Is that why you need to install java <laughs> I don't think uh, is Java a requirement for this yes. one. Oh <laughs> no, yeah. I think that has more to do with a uh, Adafruit, uh, the Adafruit screen and the uh, little bonnet um, for the uh, the Raspberry Pi Zero, and it's uh, the uh, author is currently working on a Python GUI interface to show uh, it not just a progress bar, but allow you proper navigation and not just DD mm. one drive to the other, but also be able to copy, say, stuff from one smaller drive to a bigger drive. So that that that, that would be very nice. And to have a dedicated device just for that, that that's pretty good. I would like to see yeah. something as far as like usability. Because I can see making something like this really yeah, is fun of me. Like, yeah, that's neat. And- but if you could take something like this and repurpose um, and plug in like a 12 port USB on to where I could plug in 12 USB drives and stick that in and get it to flash all 12 of those at one time, mm-hmm. might have something useful. Free yeah. Vendetta. Very nice. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. there's somebody stuck with that job somewhere. <laughs> I'm like, oh, they get the big box convention or something like that and they didn't have the foresight. Someone's. To get probably them. already automated one that the moment you plug one in it just automatically gets imaged it's like, yes pedro maybe but <laughs> doesn't require java no <laughs> probably not no <laughs> so there <laughs> that, that 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 is a win i'll, I'll give it <laughs> <laughs> something i was looking for um when i was setting up a um, jack trip hub server on our raspberry pi was uh, an easy, easy way to set the governor on a pie. I went to Google. I'm like, hey, man, how, how do I like slam this thing just squarely on YOLO? Sit mm-hmm. back and relax. Performance. <laughs> well, the internet came back from like, man, we got results from 2013, 2016, <laughs> all the different pie versions. Some of it works. Some of it shrug emoji. Mm. This, is, this is not a straightforward thing. I'm like, why, why isn't there the equivalent of like CPU power? You know, I'm like, hey, performance. All right, I'm done with performance. Go back to on demand or go into power save. <laughs> and find anything. I dug around and I dug around. Finally, as one does, I ended up on, I think, like Stack Overflow or someplace like that. And I found a link. It's like, oh, just use this. It's real easy to use. And it's a very new program, but it's very easy. This is raspbycpu.gov. It's just a bash script to conveniently change your Raspberry Pi governor and let the setting persist through restarts. And it's got a nice little in-curses GUI. It's easy to pull up. I dug it. It's super easy. Super easy. To, I mean, you, it's a pip install, okay? All right? Nice. That's it. <laughs> and... Hang on, let's see. That's the install command. Yeah. Okay. No, I take that back. This wasn't the pip install. This is, you get to do a wget, but it's wget. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's still a one liner to it, download yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> it just works. You do it. You type in cpu.gov. It pulls up like an old school, you know, like blue and curses screen. It's like, pick the one you want. 
Okay. And nice. If, and if you want to set up um, on demand, you can set what percentage of what percentage that's going to kick in. I'm like, hey, that's great. Because when I'm doing the show, I want the little pie back here screaming for like a sweet release of death. <laughs> at full blown. <laughs> and, you know, when I'm just playing around with it, I just want it to be on on demand. So there's an easy way to do that. But. We are over time, so we got to bounce out of here. If you want to get in touch with us, Pedro, how can they do that? Well, uh, there's a multitude of different ways. You send can send us uh, DMs on Twitter. Yes, send DMs on Twitter. You can flash uh, high powered LED uh, torches in our eyes and try to do Morse code as our <laughs> retinas scream in pain. Just, Why are you doing that? The best way to actually get in touch with us is to go to LinuxGameCast.com. Hit the contact button. There's a form that appears after several disclaimers and caveats that you probably should read. Nope. Uh, and if you'd like to send some feedback for this Wednesday show, what we're doing right now, you can just pick mm -hmm. LWDW from the little drop down, or you can send some hate mail for that uh, foul mouthed Saturday show. Mm -hmm. uh, what myself, uh, Ven, and Jordan. Do. <laughs> what if you get a question like if you want to ask me something and you're in discord just at reply me in the chat that's the easiest way to do it yes that's kind of brilliant yeah just definitely. at reply Pedro at random because <laughs> I'm, I'm on discord usually so I'll probably see you the don't at. Even have to at reply <laughs> yeah. Pedro because just just mention him he'll find it we'll do that. Twitter is also good for me and Pedro. <laughs> Twitter's also good. <laughs> Twitter's brilliant. Yes, Jill is very active on our Discord too, so put Jill on Discord. <laughs> yes. There we go. We gotta get out of here, but I'm gonna roll some credits before we do that. <laughs> yeah. Yay! <laughs>